Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. Welcome everybody to another live interview. And this time I have the pleasure to have my friend Rob van Esdonk with me. Um, and we are going to talk mostly about uh, mentality, mindset, and he's going to tell us all about his fearless attitude that he had in the ring and now in his life. Rob, thank you so much for joining me, taking the time to, uh, to be here. You're welcome. And um, yeah, let's start off, Rob. Can you uh, explain a little bit more about yourself, who you are, and what you've been doing so far in your life to, uh, to get where you are now? Okay, uh, my name is Rob van Esdonk. I was born in 63. I've been doing my life, my whole life, I've been doing sports, basketball, soccer, triathlon, fight sport, judo. And then I started to, to, to play education with children and I always want to be the best. I always want to be good. I always want to win. And that time, uh, yeah, I did, I did the soccer because when we were young, we played a lot of soccer. And I played basketball in the national basketball team. I play um, the triathlon, I went running bicycle on the bike, swimming. So I was an all-round supporter. But then in a while, uh, I became uh, in biathlon. I was uh, running in uh, other sports with five sports. With the military. I was military also. I joined the, the Green Berets military service. I was professional instructor there. Wow. So that's, that's where also my you get the mindset, what you want, you can decide what you want to do and then you can make what is your dream come true and Steve your, your your goals and get your goals what you want nice we're going to dive a little bit more into that just, just for the understanding um, because of course you're, you're Dutch Green Berets for you is a is a, is a known term what, what does that mean what, what kind of area within the military is that Green Berets. Uh huh. It's a commandos. It's a, a special force. Okay. They are sent in to uh, to get in military ter territory with planes at night. They jump uh, with the parachute and they mm -hmm. hide themselves and they are the eyes of the army back. And when they uh, give all the, the details, when the, the day must return, they must go back in enemy force and they have no food. They have, so they, they must survive and they must get to fight and to get back on the way that they, they must uh, imagine. Exactly, exactly. All right, so that gave me a bit more understanding on how you get to that mindset that you have throughout the time that we've met. So, what I wanted to dive right in with is, um, you know, when I look around and see the young people, um, you know, they just seem to be made of some different material than you, for example. You know, most of them look weak, no interest in achieving things in their lives. Um, you, on the other hand, can, can say, you know, you were the first foreigner, I believe you mentioned to me, to join the K-1 World Series in Japan. Um, you've been a commando, uh, you know, you faced the best of the best in the ring. And, and plus, you actually became a heavyweight champion of the world. So, my question to you is, how did you get this mentality to always wanting to win, 
no matter the cost. And how can we as fathers teach this to our kids so the next generation is going to have that winning mentality? Yeah, you can teach your children what you want. But when they go to school and they are in other environment, then they, they teach the other lesson they get that other things learned. Mm. Also, when um, now nowadays, uh, when, when your, child, your children go to school on the bike or you must go walk, now, Papa, can you please bring me? That's the mentality nowadays. You know, in our days, we had to we go run and we go we go bike. We do okay, yes, pop. We do. We don't argue with other people. But nowadays, they get that learn at school. But why they and get asked the question, why must I do that? Why can I not do it this another way? It's uh, it's the, the mentality is changed. Okay, yeah, absolutely, gotta agree with that. Um, so can you share with us how, how did you get the mentality to win and, and what you just mentioned, walk to school with, without arguing or um, you know, taking that bike? Yeah, you don't, you, you don't get this, you, you don't, you, you don't come inside, you don't go come knocking on your door. You, I, I, when I was playing games, uh, like Monopoly, I wanted to win. And I, oh, I, if I, if the other one was really concentrated and while winning and buying the, the streets to win the game, then I was trying to to talk about something else to to discharge his share where, where he was uh, thinking at to, to put him on the other mind <laughs> on the way that I had a better way to win. This psychology game also. Mm. I was a bit running with basketball. I always want to win, but but also when I lose and we lost, yeah, it's the it's a game. You must be strong because if you lost, the other guy or the other team has been stronger or have been played better. You must be also be a good loser. You must know that you wanted to win, but you must also accept when the other one has won and be supportive and re re respect that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But are you mentioning then that that winner's mentality just, um, it was something that innately was within you or you've grown that over time by doing things over and over again? Yeah, my father was also military when I was small. He took me to, when we had a holiday on school, he took us to the army and I played there with children and also on the sport gym and so I, I, I yeah I got to to I, I came into it by when I was a boy and also by things um, in the army for example you can achieve what is in your mind if you really want something bad you can do that and I also if I give teach my uh, when I teach people or I give my lessons I many times come with this sample. Um, for example, if you ask in a woman lift a car, is she strong enough to lift the car from? You will say no, it's impossible. A woman is not strong enough to lift the car, and then everybody will agree with that. But if there is an accident, a car accident, and the baby or children is underneath the car, and the woman lift the car to get her children underneath it. It's possible, and it, it, she will have the power, and, and it's, she can do it. And if that's what you want in your mind, you can achieve. Mm. That's, that's deep. Um, I've, I've, you've trained me as well, so I've heard the story, and um, every time you tell it, I, I really enjoy it. So I hope people really appreciate it and think about what you just said, because it's so important. We, we don't realize that we can mentally do so much more that makes us do physically more than we, we think of. I'm going to go a little bit into that later on as well in regards to the fitness part. Um, so I'm just wondering in regards to, you know, your road to success, you know, you must come across a lot of obstacles and challenges. I mean, you've literally been knocked out in the ring. And of course, this is all part of the game. You know, you, 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 
you, you've practiced, you've done kickboxing and K1, so you know, you, you know what's going to happen. However, you know, every single time I saw you get back up, and it even seemed like the next fight you were having, you were even stronger than, than you were before. So I, I really must know, you know, how did you pick yourself up and again and again and have overcome, how do you call it, maybe a loss or a failure, whatever you want to call it? And that's a thing that you must uh, put, in, uh, put in your mind. You must, if I walk to the ring, you, you, build, you build up the, the pressure. Like the, the two months before the fight, you start to train, you start running, you start doing uh, the power. You, the, 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 you go to the gym, you go kickboxing, you make sparring, you make the technique training. But you also make running, you may also may make the power with, with weights. <coughs> and I, I, I put on my mind when I, when I also when if I go to the fight, I, I was always relaxed. I was not, not, not stressed. I was fully focused well. But, and if I see my opponent, I get, was a little bit angry at him. I think, who are you that you want to fight me and knock me out in front of everybody? You want to make, make me ashamed. Mm. And I always look at him and go, who the hell are you to want to do this to me? And I always had that in my mind until we go in the ring. So I was always angry at the people. Uh, well, for, well, why you want to do this? I've been training so hard, and uh, and because now you want to do this to me, and I'm gonna one, I'm gonna knock you out as soon as possible. Because as soon as as I knock him, the sooner I knock him out, I will have no injuries, and I have no time to knock me out. Mm. And of course, if we are heavyweights, the punch and the kick is gonna come hard. Of course, I've been knocked out nine times myself I'm against very strong fighters. But and yeah, that can happen. Then you and then one, I remember one time Peter Arch kicked me knock out, and I was really away. And when I wake up again, I say, huh? "And what happened? Nothing. Okay." And then I wanted to fight Peter again, but then my trainer said, "No, you've been counted out. And yeah, don't, don't stop me." So that, that's my character. Okay, the opponent can win if he knock me out. But if he don't, I want to knock him out as soon as possible. So then there will also be no, no judges to make a mistake, to can't make a wrong count. Because then you will also have that many times that, yeah, people make mistakes and they, they make a wrong count and they, they can let the other one win. So I, I want, they don't want to, to, to uh, give them their chance. So exactly. he knock out or him knock out. I like that. So you go for the finishing mentality to make no absolutely sure without a doubt that everybody and knows who and won. If, and if they want to win, they can knock me out. They must do it. Exactly, exactly. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I know you're really enjoying the show. Just want to make sure if you're liking this information, Please subscribe and um, press the like button. And also, go visit becomeafearlessfather.com. You get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father. And it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. You mentioned that you go into the ring really relaxed. And, and you know, in, in life, we just come across a lot of things that, that, uh, that are scary and that, that scare us, that, that we have fear of for doing. Um, I'm assuming that, you know, you're a big guy, you're almost two meters, you weigh over 100 kilos, if I remember correctly, when you're fighting. And the other guy is the same. I mean, we're talking about big, big guys. You walk into that ring, that guy is already there. Is there no, I don't know, anxiety or, or some thoughts that go through your head that you're like, oof, this is going to be one of those days? No, no, because that's also how I stand in. I, the, what happens, happens. If he punch me in my jaw and I, he don't, maybe I can get it and I punch him two times back, but it's also possible, yeah, my brains are uh, gone 10 seconds and I, I, I'm knocked out. Mm. It's possible. If that is possible, also if I'm in, uh, in this house and there will be an earthquake right now, uh, I'm not afraid, oh, the shit will come on my head, oh no. What happens, happens. If it comes on my head, it happens, and then I look where is the, the blood, and 
if I if I uh, survive it or how I can uh, get away. But what happens happens. You can uh, change. Exactly. That's a a good way of looking at it. But also, and and uh, you probably can understand and see that around you. It's something very difficult, and not many people have that kind of thought to approach situations just like that. Is there like? Uh, but, but, but to, to uh, interrupt you, if I am, if I know the ceiling will come down on my head, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I, I'm waiting, I, oh, it will come down on my head, oh, it will come down on my then I have no life, I'm stressed, I, I have more stress about getting the thing will fall on my head, then it really falls on my head, and out, boom, and I have a stitch or a, a bleeding or whatever. If that happens, boom, I mean, I make the best out of it. If it comes on my head, I will try to do the best what's not possible. But I will have no stress by, oh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. What happens, happens. Nice. Well, I, I like that attitude. I like the way that you share it. Thank you for that. Uh, so, you know, and you've probably noticed this as well, you know, people try something maybe once if they finally get the nerve to do it. Um, twice if they're really lucky and then you know something happens that they didn't expect or anticipated or um, didn't want to even happen and they quit you know they sulk they cry they feel sorry for themselves maybe they even blame other people happens a lot as well you know staying motivated and and trying to overcome uh, setbacks is, is so hard um, and like you for example I'm assuming you must have gotten, for example, injured during your career, right? Yeah. So what I would like to know is, you know, what would you do or what did you do to stay motivated and, and you know, keep that eye on the, on the prize, keep that eye on the win that you, you, that you continuously uh, desired? Yeah, for example, um, in the fight, Peter broke my nose. Okay, but then, and okay, that happens, but by mowing or feeling sorry by yourself, it don't change, it won't fix your nose, it won't make you breathe easier, it won't get the pain away. Pain, you don't feel the pain anyway, because it's all in your mind, and uh, you keep on going. If I, if I would know by crying, it will take away my pain, or it will fix my nose, Okay, maybe then I would cry or I would mock, but that don't change the, the problem. It won't solve the problem. It, you must deal with it when it happens and get over it. Okay. That's also with the people in your life, who you love, who is in your heart, your, your family or people around you, they die. And it's really hard and you can, you're upset and you can do whatever you want it won't change the fact that, that those people are dead um, and and uh, what i always think if people around me my family or my friends are die, die dead what would they think, look from down me down on me and they will think they also want you to go through with your life to be strong not to um, to, to to be uh, upset and, and be moaning and crying all day no, they want you to be strong and they also will not want you to go through you with your life. I would do the same if I would die. I would have a, 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 wanted that the people would around me be strong. And of course, they, would, they, 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 they lost me, but life goes on. Because tomorrow, the new bills will come in by the, by the, by the mail. And a new contract come by the mail. The life goes on. You must be strong. Exactly, exactly. Those are some powerful words. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and, you know, one of the other things that I want to talk about, which, which um, comes a little bit with your, with your career, you know, what I'm missing more and more in the world um, is, you know, acceptance of each other, you know, for who we are. It looks like we, we forming more and more groups that are placing each other across across one another and one is liking the other for, for whatever differences, right? Um, I mean, I see it here in Spain. I'm sure you see it in, in, in the Netherlands more and more as well. Um, we see it, we hear it in the, in politics, etc. So 
what I noticed about you is um, you can talk and you will talk with anybody. doesn't matter how tall they are, how small they are, uh, what kind of nationality they have, what kind of religion they have. So I'm just wondering, you know, how did you become this way? And I was also wondering, because within your career of a professional fighter, you know, you, you travel a lot all over the world, you met a lot of different people, a lot of different cultures. Is that something that has something to do with that? Or was that always something that was innate or deep inside of you that, you know, I am who I am and I love to just meet everybody and, and talk to them? I think people can read, can read your body language. I am somebody, if somebody, a person is good to me, I am 10, time, 10 times better for them. If somebody is bad for me or does something wrong to me, I do something much worse back because I, I multiply, multiply the fact what they do to me in good ways or in bad ways. And uh, I also, yeah, the people can receive that through to my body. If so, you are nice, I'll be nice back. If somebody wants to make problems, okay, we have a problem. I rather don't have a problem because it's not good to make a problem. Exactly, exactly. Um, what are some of the, uh, that's just maybe a personal interest, what are some of the things that you've learned from your travels or seen that um, maybe changed you as a person and that you've always kept with you um, throughout all these years um, becoming um, the person you are now? Uh, of course, uh, I, I am who I am. I was what I was. But, but by uh, uh, during time and things what happens to you, you you stand different in some in in, in your what's happening with you. For example, uh, with wives or women, I always uh, when I had a girl. I, when they make a problem or when they argue, when they have a hat, and then I say goodbye because I, I don't want to have a problem. And then I take another girl and I go with somebody else. That was how I was in my younger years. But now, in, during time, in, by life, um, they, you know, when uh, sometimes you're not, you, you're not on the same level. Uh, a woman thinks different than a man and I accept that and uh, what, like, now, like nowadays I've been married with my wife with Julie and I, I I'm, sometimes something happens and before I would I would not accept this problem but nowadays I think okay and I get over it and we, 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 I accept what is going on mm -hmm. right yes. Nice. Okay. Well, we'll go a little bit more in, in, in regards to a relationship with, uh, uh, with women in a little bit as well, especially in regards to your marriage. Um, however, what I want to talk about right now is that, um, something else that I've, uh, this is something that I actually really uh, admire in you all. Um, and, and that's something that I don't have and it's actually making me a little bit tired, feeling tired with myself. You know, every time I go and talk to a certain people or a certain group of people, you know, I change who I am. I don't stay authentic, you know, just because I want people to like me. So, yeah, but then well, you have a very difficult, uh, it's very difficult. And you know why? There's too many people on this world. And some people like you and some people hate you. Oh, the people who hate you. Well, let them go, don't pay attention to them unless they make a problem to you. And it's impossible that everybody likes you because one people uh, like French fries, one people are veganist, and some people uh, want uh, meat, and some people like fish. Everybody has a different taste. So you cannot, let, uh, it's impossible that everybody likes you. And also, the people are very mean if you are. A good person, or you are uh, doing well in your business, or you are rich, or you are happy with your wife. People want to make a problem for you. They when they talk with your wife, or you look on the other woman, or they they are jealous inside. 
if you are really if you have really good people around you they are happy if you're happy they're happy if you are rich they are your problem is their problem that's what i learned to go when i hang around a lot a lot with turkish people with muslim people that uh, my problem is that if I have headache, they also have pain. That's unbelievable. Mm. Well, yeah, that's that's really great. Yeah, it's one of the things that I've been learning over time is like make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. However, that's not always as easy as it sounds. No, that's very difficult. And uh, and also, I if I notice that the people is wrong or bad then i put get away don't stay out of my neighborhood stay around my area don't go with me or leave me alone mm -hmm. yeah i don't want uh, them to give them the the the, 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 the attention or the, the, the to come inside my life or to make problems or what's not good because yeah but there, there are many people that are no good um True, <laughs> true. But that, but that's what makes it so difficult sometimes to find the the right people, and especially if you know you've been around. I, know, I won't say wrong people, but wrong people for for me as a person at that time. It's so difficult to to let go and and find something new um, because of the time that you spent. Um, talking about time, you know, I actually believe. It was about, let me think, eight, nine years ago that I went to visit you um, in the Netherlands and at your gym, Discipline. And I remember vividly, I think that's one of the best memories I, or, or best kept memories that I have um, of you is that you took me to a gym to train, to work out. And it was an incredibly grueling workout and i remember i was struggling it was really hard it was that one where we did 50 reps and we'd go high and then every time you couldn't do it anymore we'd go lower <laughs> see i mean i remember it very well i haven't never done it after that <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you were a, a machine a beast out there and you know for the people that that either have seen the announcement that you and I were going to have this interview and saw the picture and you know just freaking strong ass body and and even now I mean yesterday you showed me your biceps and it's just like holy crap so I'm just wondering you know there's so many fathers out there that don't see the need for working out at all so can you please explain you know why have you always focused on being in shape what kind of benefits have it, has it given to you and how did you make sure that you always stay disciplined over all these years to continue your daily workout routines? Uh, no, the two different things. One, uh, for the, the, when I was a trainer and I, want, I wanted for my uh, uh, students, I wanted them to do something with weights 10 times, 20 times. I showed them how that it's possible by an older man or with a I wanted to show to them that it's possible, easy, and I want, and then, and then I do something so strong, and that also makes you very strong because you know that they cannot do it, and you can. So you do three, four, five extra times, and or after, and then they must do it, and they can only do it one or two or three or four, five. They can do it less more than you, and that makes you very strong. And that makes you that they get respect for you. Mm -hmm. And I also don't only want to get the respect, but I want them to show that it's possible to do it. And then I, I motivate them by, yeah, come on, let's do it. And I also train sometimes, uh, uh, like for example, a rugby club who is doing not so good, who is not winning many uh, uh, many matches. They, they, want, they, they, they connect me and they ask, can you please give them uh, some good lessons. Now then I give them a lessons. I, I'm gonna, but I'm telling them before. I, I have a group. I make a group now in two different parts. The one part is the part who does everything until they fall. And I want to go and they make another group who want to stop, who want to complain, who want to look, who is looking for excuses to not do the things. 
because I'm going to make this right now before I start, because the people who are standing on the right who don't want to do what I'm saying, they can go home. I don't want to work with them. I don't want to use my time. So then only the people who are really want to go until the end, they can stay. Okay, and then I show them that they really must do hard exercises. And I'm going to teach them that even when they are dead, when they are broke, that they can do another exercise. And even when they think I am finished, they can do another exercise. And then that way I make them very strong, uh, so well physically as mentally, because next time if they come by something what is heavy, they know they can do it easily. And when it gets more heavy, they can do it again. And when it gets more heavy, they can do it again. And but I want to keep them by 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 doing this this, this uh, exercise. I want to show them that it's possible. And if they know here it's not possible, but they must do it and they can do it because somebody's yelling at you and because somebody's motivating you and they do it, they they then it makes the people stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that. I remember we had the course here in Spain where we trained long hours and then at the end, very end, you made us do, I think, like 10 jumps with our knees to our chest and everybody was looking at you like you were crazy. But everybody did it anyway, which was uh, absolutely amazing and inspiring. So I understand the example and I hope people pick up on this because it's so important to know that we can do so much more than we really think. Uh, and because the people, they make, they make the exercise and they do the 10 times even when they are dead. And when they've done it, it gives them the feeling, whoa, look, they, they get the good feeling. By, by, that's what you, you want to give the people. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's then um, your way of making sure that people grow their confidence, correct? Yeah, go grow the confidence and know know that they can go much more and do much better than the, what what they want. And I also let them do exercise really heavy, and I write down the time or I write down down how many times they have, and then I, we we start building. And then next time I let them do it again, and then I do it myself. And I show them that an old man from 55 can do much stronger and much better than what they've done. And then I, I tease him there. I tell them, friends, look what that is. Look, he's a pussy. He can do the right. I tease them a little bit to make them improve next time, to improve them, they, what they've done. Nice. And that's the way we make it. We, we, we on a, not a nice, and a likely way, they I want to, to improve themselves and feel them, let them feel good about themselves. And, and put their uh, borders higher and better than what they can do. Exactly, exactly. And definitely what you mentioned, inspire by example, showing them that, you know, you can do it and it's definitely possible. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I, that's the reason why I'm trying to do as much as I can to inspire my kids so they can see like, okay, um, it's possible. I'm doing, giving them all the good examples of things that I'm doing. So, yeah, I, um, I, I'm, I, I like the way that you shared that. So, Going to something a little bit different in regards to, to mindset uh, that we talked about uh, up until now and um, going a little bit about what you, uh, what you were talking about earlier. You know, yesterday I was actually watching a video and this guy was sharing that 50% of all marriages fail. Now, you've been married for a while with, with Julie. And I was just wondering, you know, what are some tips that, that you could share with fathers out there that are struggling in their relationships? Yeah, my best tip, if you struggle in your marriage, you must be happy in your marriage. You must be have fun, you must laugh, everything must be good. If it's not good, yeah, then you must let uh, each other lose a bit and then let them go their own way. Maybe then you miss what you, that she's not around you. And if it don't succeed, then you're looking for another wife and marry again. <laughs> That's my tip. Because you, 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 you must be with somebody who you love, you must have fun. If you have stress or irritation, it's not good. 
then you must find a solution or you, you, can, you, you don't belong together. You cannot uh, push, 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 push. If it don't go good, it don't go good. You must accept each other and you must uh, yeah, I want my wife to be happy and she wants me to be happy. And if, it is, if there's not there, if, there, if there's no connection, okay, then you better separate and uh, find somebody else who you are happy with and uh, leave each other. Mm. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah, exactly. That's a good tip. To, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but you, you must be happy. And if you're not happy together, and then there's nothing, something is not good, then you, you must find somebody else. True. Um, but I, I, well, I can assume that you understand that there's a lot of fathers out there that then are afraid. Um, in regards to you know what's going to happen with the kids and uh, you know that that's most yeah. often a reason. It's always a problem. Yeah. That's, that's really the woman of, and on that way can be really mean when they are separated from if a couple together. Okay, but when they separate and there are children involved, then yeah, then then, then you must be uh, you must accept that also because the rest of your life. You be the father, and the rest of your life, the mother is the mother. Okay, and if you you can not get along good, or you don't have you have problems, okay, then leave each other alone, but make good, uh, good uh, overeenkomsten arrangements. It? Make good arrangements. What time we pick it up? What is with you? How we do with the chill build the clothes? And if you make that good. Nah, nah. But women are uh, can be mean by by playing this game by by using making the problem to with the children to tell them the the problem to the children. But a child is a child. Leave him be a child. Let them be happy and, and uh, solve your problem with your wife or don't play to the to the children. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great advice. Thanks for sharing that. So. Um, you know, all of us as fathers, you know, we, we're trying to do our utmost best to, to be there for our kids, to connect with them. Um, sometimes it's, it's so difficult though, right? And, you know, when I see you with your kids, you know, they, they, they really seem to love and connect with you. Um, I even believe you, your, your oldest daughter, she, um, she, she inscribed to join, join this webinar with us. Um, you know, what's your... Your secret, or what have you done over over time that that made you be a good dad to them? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, of course, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to have the best for my children, and I I want to teach them how life is, how life can be, and I want telling them examples, and I, I'm, I'm guarding them, and I'm. Tell them to go left, tell them to go right, and I, I wanted to explain to them why, and I want to, if there is time to explain, and I want to make the best of them. And the the the, you, the children they see how you go along with problems and how you solve, and they copy it because Serena and Philippe, my son, they they sometimes they are exactly me with how they act with things. It's funny to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I actually, I want to tell you this story because I remember it really well as well. As when you came to pick me up from the train station and you had your son, and I think at that time he was like five years old or something, and we were sitting in the car and he opened the window and stuck his head out and started um, calling to this girl, to these uh, girls that were like, I can't even remember, 20 something. And he was like, hey, pretty ladies, can you come over here? I want to talk to you. And I was like laughing, and I'm like, that's so what, what he learned from his father. No fear whatsoever, none. And just, you know, in a polite way, not rude, nothing, but Very respectful. Because otherwise, I, if I hear the story, I think already it's wrong to open a window while we are driving, but we were not driving because hmm. then I would get angry, so we would chill. But he would talk, he would make Konya, that's possible on, on a funny way. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. It's one of the things also that I remember it was absolutely hilarious. 
But I was also looking at the kid like, that's amazing at that age to be so fearless, to, to have such confidence to just talk while most of us, you know, we're so scared of what uh, somebody else is going to think or say or how they're going to respond. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's funny, but it's also um, sometimes causes problems. Like you are talking with me one hour now. I could put Philippi on the stool and he's 11. He would talk with you the same. He will uh, also in English he, because he it's unbelievable. Mm. And uh, it, it's yeah, by your way, it's funny. And by sometimes, many times for me, it's also funny. But sometimes, he's a children. Let him be children. He, he, he wants, he knows too much about life already. Last, le, le, last the month he, uh, he, in school, he, they gave him sex lessons about, you know, uh, flinders in the bug. How you say this in English? Butterflies in the stomach. Yeah, butterflies in the stomach. That, that's how they teach the little children how, how about sex and uh, what's going on and uh, education. But Philippe <laughs> didn't, didn't know. <laughs> Philippe knew there are no butterflies yet about sex and this and that. And unbelievable that. <laughs> so that, but in that way, he, he is. No, you may know too much already. Hmm. Did it get him in trouble? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. He is, he, is, he is telling the teachers how it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like his father. No <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I would have loved to be here. That would have been so amazing. Yeah, annoying. yeah, yeah. But, but you would love to be also the next time we were at the swimming at the swimming pool with me, with my with, uh, friends of mine, the, the woman with the, with the two, two children, one girl from 13 and one boy from six. And every time I hear the guy, the, the, the Bob, Bob Meister, how do you say this? Uh, the lifeguard. The lifeguard, thank you. The lifeguard was, every time he was whistling, <laughs> of course to the children, uh, Philippi and the other guy, uh, they were doing something, trying what they could do, yes, and what they could do, no. And then it was really quiet. I couldn't, I, I, I think, hey, where are they? Because I don't hear anything anymore. Then I go, look, they were playing and on, the, on the playground, where they were sitting on the machine, they were chilling. I said, what are you doing here? Um, yes, this girl, we are chilling. Yes, I feel, we are talking, we are chilling. I said, what is, um, what are you talking about? Yes, Philippe say. Um, I'm explaining this small boy from six about this, uh, this butterflies and the sex lessons. <laughs> yes, really. I said, and then I, I said, no. I said, Philip, come here. And I had, to, I had to explain to him that he cannot do this to a boy, a little small boy from six, five, six years old. Oh, when I went to the mother and I say, look what happened. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> no, not about butterflies. He was telling other stories. <laughs> explaining him how life, how it is in life. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. So how are you feeling? Yeah, you really tell happy, happy, happy me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that would make me so embarrassed. But you told the mother, right? I mean, that's impressive too. He told what? No, that you explained it to the mother of the of the six year old. Yeah, but she, she know, and she knows me. She's my friend, and she knows also mm -hmm. Philip. And she she said, yeah. And then it, it, it was okay. But if you uh, to tell the story, it's uh, unbelievable that a boy a boy from eleven is given six lessons to somebody from six. Somebody from five six who's play with his car or do with his. <laughs> they, 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 they cannot talk about. It. It's unbelievable. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. I, I still don't hope it's going to happen with my son, though. <laughs> but anyway. I let, I let Philip let, let him make a new uh, um, agreement, a new uh, offer with you, appointment with you. That's so one hour. He can come over and explain to my kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now you won't be yet. <laughs> No. They, if he, if you, they will be too smart. They, no. they will be on age, like Phil is 11, but he knows about 17, 18 mm -hmm. already. It, it, it's, uh, 
they didn't, there's maybe my mistake, but sometimes you have an advantage about things and sometimes you have negative things. To, uh, no, absolutely. But that's the good part about being a father. No, you know in advance that we're going to make tons and tons of mistakes. So, <laughs> Yeah, everybody makes mistakes. Exactly. So, you know, we spoke a little bit yesterday on the phone and I noticed something that, uh, you know, when we were talking and I asked you about, you know, how's your father doing? Because I was so impressed that you took him to, uh, to this gym with the electrodes and, and, you know, making sure that he gets fit again. And you were speaking in such a formal and respectful way about your father that I haven't heard in, in a long, long time, you know, and I was just wondering, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this? Like, like, how did it come with you to, to talk? It's uh, uh, you, you, you get what you give. Mm -hmm. If you give your respect, you get respect. I also explained to Philippi, to my son, you, you, if you talk uh, with me, you must say, Ew. you must not, uh, yeah, teach me. I don't know how you say this in English. Yeah, they don't have that form, but it's, it's, it's a formal way of speaking. Yeah, a formal way of speaking. So then uh, all the other, uh, they say, all my other friends on school, they say, you against the father and mother. Why I must say, you? Then I say, I say, I explain to him, Philip, if you do this to me, you give respect to me by using the good, nice, good words, you put me on a higher level and you also put yourself on a very high level because then you're well educated. And, and I explain it to him and he always says, still now, and my daughter also, she's 28, she still says, you against me. And mm -hmm. if you do that, and if, you know, if I speak about my father, he's 93, I say you and I speak very respectful of him because, yeah, he's my father. You, 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 you must give what you get. And if you treat the people that way, you get it back. And if I would, if I would not do that, if I would speak bad about my father, I, I give a wrong sample. Then my, my son and my daughter will also speak bad to me against me. They, you will, they will say, but you do it yourself. Absolutely. And I, I, I give my father so much respect. He's 93, but yeah, he, he's, he's really strong. And 25 years ago, something, he had an operation on his stomach and they found uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. They found cancer to his... Uh, kidney and catch it to his liver and then they, 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 they say we can give you chemotherapy and uh, then you will live one, one two three months longer but you are going to die and my father said oh if i'm going to die then i'll die i'll see when i'm dead and i, I arrange my funeral and when i'm dead i'm dead and then he's and now he's still living he's still living he, so after a few months, the doctor said, well, it's possible. Can we say, you know, he said, you stay away from me. You leave me alone. I see what's happening when I'm dead. And uh, you, uh, and that's um, also unbelievable. That's also his mindset. He, they find cancer to his liver. And normally you have a two, three months life uh, and then it's finished. But he, and then he's still living and he's really strong. He's 93 years and unbelievable how strong he is. I yeah, saw, over the hundreds. <laughs> probably. I mean, I saw that video and it was really impressive. So, and but also that's what I mentioned: the way that you treat him and the way that you um, take care of him and stuff like that. That was very impressive. Nowadays, you see just you know, oh, my parents are old. Just put him in at home and maybe go visit them once in a while. I mean, I've seen that with my grandparents. Um, you know, and my mother would take care of them, but their other two brother and the other two daughter and so they never come. So it, it is, it's, it's impressive. And I really, it, it's so powerful what you just shared. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and in the Muslim world, they do that also many, they take care of the older people and uh, we also tried to live together with my father in one house. Mm. My, my wife and my, my family and my, my that was uh, impossible. Then you get you get little things, you get annoying, annoyment, you get uh, 
you get irritated by little things and they, they, they look different they are from a different uh, category and they are uh, then you you bounce you get problems with your wife and mm-hmm. they don't go together but i do as many things with my father and i try to teach him so well because when i was a boy and you know, i was a baby he did that with me so now i do that with him exactly exactly and i want to do the best for him in all my life absolutely well i hope that people pick up on that and uh, and start thinking about how they're treating their parents but you're you're definitely inspiration the way that you uh, and i also know if my father will die tomorrow then and then i'll be sad but i know i've been all my life doing the best for him and i yeah i accept that fact but if i would not have done put all my time and to go so many times out with him and put my time in if i would not have done that when he's gone i cannot do it anymore then uh, then then i cannot blame i will maybe i get i will get very i blame myself the rest of my life and i would not get over it maybe absolutely that's so true wow this is a good way to uh with these powerful words to conclude this, uh, this interview, Rob, um, just for people that may be watching this now or watching this later, if they have some more questions for you, you know, how, how can they, um, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, every question is fifty euro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open for you know I me. Mean, if I if somebody asks me what's possible i do it i always help i'm always open for everybody and um, they can, can contact you you can contact me i'm always open for everything for uh, somebody to help some people or to go everywhere anywhere or whatever great well i appreciate that they can, they can contact me by you because by you they get to know me and by yeah. this uh, by this video uh, that sounds great, Rob. Um, thanks again. You know, I actually, um, through all my little bit nerves for getting to this interview, I completely forgot at the beginning to congratulate you because um, you recently became a grandfather. I even forgot yesterday. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> so yeah. sorry. Thank so, you very much, Klaus. Um, yeah, I saw the picture. Um, very excited for you. Has that changed anything for you? How, how do you look now? Now many people say it will change your life. Now your grandfather, yeah. Why? Now I'm grandfather. What does it mean? Change? Okay, I've had, yeah. I'm very happy. I have a nice uh, daughter, Elida, and yeah, I'm, she's healthy. I'm waiting for her to start talking and to to, to teach you things also. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm very happy with him. Like the people say, it will change your life. No, it won't change my life because I, I have a no grandfather and that's it. Exactly. Great. Awesome. So again, Rob, thanks for, for spending the time with, uh, with me on this live interview. I hope everybody enjoyed it and we will talk again soon. Thank you. It was your pleasure to uh, talk with you and I hope people have something they, they can do something with it. Bye bye, class. We have contact. Bye. Are you still meeting up with your friends now that you're a father? Kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, or relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends, feeling energetic, happy, and confident? Spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with. And you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges. Face your fears with determination be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.